Hi guys, it's Dave from Daiwei Queen here. Today I'm going to talk about the meaning of Sil Nim Dao. Or Sil Lim Dao. Um, this is a question we all ask ourselves and one of the first things you hear in Wing Chun is that this form, the first form, Sil Nim Dao, is the most important form. It's the form that everything else is built on. And as a beginner I really wondered why it was so important. It seemed such a simple form. And I was told by um, Sifu Jim and his instructors that Sil Nim Dao meant in English Sil Little Nim Dao Nim Tao meant ideas or, or um, thoughts. So small thought form is what we were always told it meant. And that really sufficed for many years for me, but I always felt like there must be more to it. Um, we, the take we had on it for years was that uh, Wing Chun was about little ideas, how to raise up your spine, for instance, how to turn on your Tai Gong, how to get into your stance, how to spin your joints, how to think about First circles and then spheres moving, balls, um, all sorts of ideas, lots and lots of ideas that were just little ideas and all these apparently add up to, to power in Wing Chun. Now I was lucky enough to start training in I think it was late 98 with Susanna Ho who was um, a Sifu who initially trained with Sifu Jim. Uh, she was from Hong Kong and she went back to Hong Kong and she trained with Si Gong Chu for many years, I think it was 11 years, and then came back and set up in um, Sydney and uh, I was lucky enough to be accepted as her student. And uh, one of the first things Susanna said to me was that uh, so what we use in Wing Chun is the mind of the body. So it's a different mind to the normal thinking mind. And her senior student Norman Maher also said the same thing to me. He said, it's, uh, it's, it's like the unconscious mind, the subconscious mind, which is what Sigong had said to him. And I've since, of course, read it in different uh, writings. Essentially, that was the idea that we were learning to use the mind of the body. And as an artist, that made sense to me because uh, I was at art school. I'd learned all the techniques of the artists at this classical art school and then discovered that there was much more to it than just thinking it through and being technical. There was another type of mind that I'd started to experience. It was almost as if it was on autopilot beautiful things happened when you just relaxed and stopped trying so hard and um, especially drawing to music made a big difference uh, just getting into a state of mind where you weren't worrying and thinking and stressing and it's actually very stress relieving to get into that state so what uh, Susanna and Norman were telling me really made sense but how to make that happen in my Wing Chun, that was another matter. I just didn't seem to be able to connect what I felt in art to what I felt in Wing Chun. So as the years went on, you know, I just thought about small thoughts and I, I meditated on this idea of the mind and the body. Um, and had some breakthroughs with it, trying to get into a no-minded state, for instance, which I've learned in yoga, um, which was sort of like what we did in... in um, in art. Anyway, uh, fast forward to a couple of years ago at the Australian Wing Chun Federation conference, I was uh, giving a talk about the mind, I mean, uh, sorry, the, the sword and the, and the brush, basically uh, things I had discovered about Wing Chun being similar to art, similar to painting um, and those connections and the gentleman approached me, introduced himself as uh, Stephen Lung, um, cool guy from Hong Kong who now lives in Sydney and um, he was a friend of Seagong's and uh, his family are friends of Seagong's so he said to me, I'd really like if you'd like 
to show you what these what Sunim Dao means in Chinese. So he wrote it up on the board for me, and I'll just throw up the words Sunim Dao so that you can see them. And he said, Sil, as you probably know, means small or little. Uh, this is the interesting word nim, or he says it lim, it sounds like lim. The word tao means a type of a mind. Um, lim, in Chinese, indicates that it's the mind of the heart. Um, it's, it, uh, Stephen said it was the, the now present mind, the mind that's right now, not the mind that's thinking about the future, not the mind pondering the past, it's the mind right now. And he said this mind is considered by the Chinese to be the, the real mind, like the, the main mind, whereas in the West we think of the, the conscious mind, that's the main mind. The unconscious is just this weird thing that gives us dreams and causes people to go a bit psycho sometimes, or, you know, it's just a sort of a hangover from animal state maybe, psychologists make much more of it, but generally people think the thinking mind is the mind. And Stephen was saying that this, this Nim, from Siu Nim Dao, uh, traditionally the Chinese people consider that the main mind. So I was, I was fascinated by that, thrilled by it. And I went home and I started, because he'd written up the word, I started searching for it and Incredibly, I found the word online, different websites, and the translation for NIM was mindfulness. Now this is a bit of a buzzword in the corporate scene, but mindfulness essentially means to, to get out of the mind that's worrying and get into a sort of meditative state, um, cease all the stressful, anxious, neurotic thinking and just be here now. So I was quite amazed and thrilled to find that this word means mindfulness. And obviously other people have realized this. Um, so yeah, so I, I got to a, a new revelation of this Sil Nim Dao, why this form might be really important. It seemed to be indicating that this form is about a mind state. And um, perhaps that was the point of it is to find that mind state and drive your Wing Chun with that mind state. So fast forward a bit further to this year, um, I went to the 83rd Chu Shong Tin birthday party celebration in Sydney. And for us Chu Shong Tin alumni, it was a who's who of our Wing Chun. And it was a thrilling time because I got to meet uh, all sorts of wonderful people. Um, Sipo, my Sigong's wife, um, Horace Chu, who I've, I've been corresponding with over time, uh, Sigong's son, I really look forward to meeting him. It was Peter Wong, who I'd seen in the in videos and in the books, and I really admired what he'd written there. Um, and lots of other people, and all the, uh, the people that I most admire in um, Australian Wing Chun and lots of friends and some people I hadn't seen for 20 years I ran into. Anyway, at the end of the conference, Stephen invited me to come down and, and have lunch with him and Frank. And when I got there, lo and behold, Sifu Peter Wong's there and Albert Chong and his lovely wife Rebecca. Now, Albert and uh, Albert's our most senior person in our uh, Sifu Jim lineage here in Australia and somebody we really highly respect and admire as far as Wing Chun goes. He also is Chinese, speaks Chinese. Peter Wong, you know, highly uh, regarded man in Hong Kong who's been doing Wing Chun for many, many years, um, over 30 years. Obviously Chinese and uh, in the conversation went on from lunch to a, a late afternoon tea and there was a number of other guys, um, my mate Prashan, who's a, a great practitioner and uh, another friend Long John, and we just talked and talked about Wing Chun. And I said to uh, Sifu Peter Wong, 
I really want to get to the bottom of a couple of things, if I may. So what, what does the Nim Tao mean to you? And Peter, um, who spoke quite good English, but he, somehow we discovered we both speak Japanese, so his is better than mine, but he said to me, look up the word Kimoji. The Japanese word means the same thing as Nim or Lim. So, you know, being on the internet, I looked it up and there, there it was, so Kimoji means a feeling or a state of mind, a sort of a special state of mind or a feeling or feel. But isn't that interesting? So I wrote that down and then the conversation went in other directions. And then I said, what does um, seal mean? I've always been bothered by the fact that it just means a little or small, but I can't, if Nim Tao is the driving force behind our Wing Chun, this uh, mindfulness mind, now present heart mind, what is the point of this seal? You know, little, what's really the point of that? And straight away, Peter Wong said, it just means, um, don't think. Uh, and uh, Albert said, yes, that's right. Tell your students that. Don't think too much. Just don't think. That's what it means. Still means don't think. And I'd never heard that, of course. And I wrote that down also. Um, I actually tapped it in my phone. And they were talking, and I'm sitting there thinking, thinking, and then I thought, wait a minute, Su Ling Dao means don't think, feel. Where have I heard that? Of course, I've heard it in End of the Dragon 40 years ago in a darkened cinema in Brisbane. Watching End of the Dragon, Bruce Lee's teaching his young student, and he admonishes him at the end, don't think, feel. And that totally blew my mind. I uh, talk about coming full circle. I thought that was my first Wing Chun lesson. I didn't really understand what Bruce was getting at. I had a vague idea who was saying, you know, use the unconscious mind. Don't think about it because fighting's too fast to think. But uh, there it was. Two real masters, well over 30 years experience each, both Chinese, said to me, Su Nim Dao, means don't think, don't think too much, feel. So um, that just blew me out and I hope that uh, some of you listening to this will be blown out by that because um, for me that's exactly what I do when I make art that I consider to be powerful art, that's real art rather than just a technical exercise. I literally stop thinking and I feel it. I get emotional. I I just let it happen and I don't really try to make it happen. It's, um, it's a strange feeling. It's almost as if it just happens itself. And, and I I do believe, and I'll talk more about this, um, the concept of Nimlik, uh, which I'm going to talk about next, is really about letting that mind take over and do the job of fighting, defending, whatever it's going to do. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you next episode.